you oh. do so, you told me on it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Are they ready yet? Ask my how much longer. How much longer? About 30 seconds. We want to make sure that we hear you. Oh, okay. All right. Ready to go. Testing one, two, three, four. Testing. Everybody know Billy? Oh, yeah. Billy is an engineer. He, he uh, <laughs> he's shy. Let's call it shy. <laughs> Billy put the whole studio together. So how was your week? What's your son's name? What? What's your name? I can't hear you. I'm going to always ask you until I can hear you clearly. So you're going to have to learn to speak up. Oh, how was your week? Did you get angry? I can't hear you. I can't hear you. And who made you angry? Oh. <laughs> he did like this, his sister. <laughs> and, and, and how did you deal with it? So you knew you were acting like a little girl? Good morning. Welcome to church. I am Jesse Peterson. Thank you so much for being with me. You can get involved by going to the chat line on the uh, YouTube channel there. And Hake will pass on your questions and comments to me as we move forward. Uh, good morning, y'all. Morning. How's everybody? Well, good. good. Everybody had good holidays, and now you're ready to start working on yourself? Nice. Um, any questions or comments or anything? Nobody had a life this week? No one. Amazing. Yes, Raymond, you had your hand? Yes. Oh, okay, Happy New Year, Raymond. Happy New Year, Jesse. How are you? All is well. Yes. This is just that, uh, just that where I'm just reorganizing. I helped my sister reorganize, uh, uh, reorganize uh, she lives in the San Bernardino area. Yes. Right now, uh, right now I have my, um, um, I have a new car. Uh, one that uh, actually one that was, one that I uh, was my mom's, and I, <laughs> yes. And I. Well, you don't want to be advertised on the, on the show, what the? Well, <laughs> I'm not advertising. I just <laughs> say my uh, what's my current situation. It's just that I. <clears throat> it's just that. I'm taking uh, taking uh, the situation <clears throat> of life one one moment at a time because nice. that's, that's what we can, all, that's all we can do at this time. That's right. Your mo your mother died, right? She died over a year ago. Has it been a year already? Yes. Wow. So it was last year that your mother died. Yes. A year ago. Yes. That's amazing, and, and it's nice that she did, huh? <laughs> at least she's at peace. And what do you think? Hold on, let me hear. No, she's not. No, I'm playing. <laughs> I'm joking. Oh, good, man. Yeah, take it one day at a time. One issue. Yes. Amazing. Any other questions or anything? Yes, sir. Um, 
I have a statement that I have to compliment on you on. Um, I went to the men's forum on Thursday, and you said something there that was brilliant. Uh, you said to uh, conquer the world, you must conquer your thoughts and feelings. And you said it at the end of the, of the two-hour men's forum, and I thought it was genius. So I have to give you a big compliment, because if you want to conquer yourself, you have to, of course, conquer your thoughts and your feelings. But of course, if you want to conquer the world, you have to do the exact same thing. And you said that's, that's our New Year's resolution for all the men. I guess, obviously, it's for the women as well. But uh, I, I agree with that statement. To conquer the world, you must conquer your thoughts and feelings. That's well, all I've got to say. Are you doing that? Are you conquering thoughts? I, I'm trying. I'm trying. Uh -huh. It's one of the hardest things ever. Oh, OK. <laughs> are you doing a silent prayer? Uh, no, I'm not. Will suffer and die. Yes, I, I know. Uh, I, I've done plenty what? of suffering. Nah. Okay. Yeah. Well, good. But, it's just uh, a nice saying, but it's not nothing you're going to do, right? About conquering the world. You like the saying, I, but you're not going to do no, it. No, I'm, I'm, I'm working on it. I'm no, working. You're not doing the side of the prayer. You're not working on it. Okay. Okay. Guilty as charged. Uh, I have to buckle down and watch that prayer, silent prayer video, I guess. Oh, okay. Nice. Thank you. But do you believe that you can conquer the world? I do. And how? Just by living in the moment like that. Oh. Oh, you heard, you heard what you just said? Did you know that before he said it? No. Oh, uh, you didn't know it before now? No, I mean, I always know it in myself. That just you can conquer to, yeah. the world? Yeah, just taking every moment as it comes and not really thinking in the future or in the past, just what I have right now. Are you doing that? So, I do. Yeah, every day. Uh, are you married? I am. This is my husband. And do you obey him? I would say 90% of the time I do. Do you obey him? <laughs> I do. Not if you're doing it 90% well, of the time. Well, I mean, you know, there's that 10% where the rational has to kick in and The I irrational has to kick in? Yeah, I ask him questions about things, but most of the time I do. But, but 90% is only when you, how do you know when you get to the 90% and then you say, that's it? Well, because I'm not going to obey <laughs> from this point forward. <laughs> no, because then I have questions about whatever we're talking about that's uh, when I feel I'm not so much obeying him because then I open whatever it is to more questions. And so when you ask him a question, if you don't listen to him, how will you obey? How would you learn? Well, from I am him? listening. That's why I'm asking questions. That oh, way we can both arrive to the best solution that works for the best situation we're in or our marriage at that moment at that time. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, is this your first time here? It is. What's your name? Donna. And how do you hear about us? I watch your show. I watch James. I watch Nick. Oh, nice. Yeah, everybody. Are you from L.A.? San Diego. Oh, right yeah. on. Welcome. Thank you. All right. And you are? My name is Jamal. Mark? No, Jamal. Jamal. This is your first time? Yes, yeah, first time. And how did you hear about it? Um, same thing. I heard through the um, YouTube. Oh, okay. Does your wife obey you? She obeys me. 90% of the time? <laughs> 90%. <laughs> and what do you do in that percentage when she's not obeying? How do you deal with that? I just deal with it. And it's okay. You know, just try not to, you know, just get, you know, overreact or anything like do that. Do you argue with her? Uh, yeah, we do. <laughs> Whoa. And why do you argue with her? Because there's anger that comes in. In you? Yeah. You know when you argue, you argue with the two women, argue with the devil, right? Oh, yeah. And so why keep arguing with the devil? That's why I look at it and be like, okay. I think about it, like, okay, I'm not even going to argue about it no more. I just keep my peace. And just, right on. And I just go the other way with it. <laughs> nice. Well, welcome, man. Oh, thank you. All right, did you know you can conquer the world? Oh, yeah. How? And you know now because of what you said? Exactly. Yeah, conquer thoughts, you can conquer the world. Mm -hmm. Amazing, but you got to conquer yourself first. True, Amazing. True. So I was, I was thinking about our, our theme and um, what is the theme for this year? I can't remember. You can't remember. So you're not working on it. Apparently not. What's the theme for this year? And then I had my yeah. You can, I can't believe how she's growing up. That's amazing. Uh, what's the theme this year? I don't know. You don't know? Okay. You weren't here last week though, right? You were not here. Oh, okay. What's the theme for this year? I don't remember. Oh, hold on a minute. I don't remember. You knew, but you just don't remember? Yeah, I, I watched. So you're not working on it then? I'm working. Not if you don't know what you're working on. I know whatever it is. It's like I'm building working a house, on. but I don't know if this is a house. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what it was. I just don't remember what it is. What's the theme for this year? I don't know. 
Ooh, uh, I never knew it to forget oh, it. Oh, okay. So. All right. Uh, what's his name this year? I come to someone. I come to. I want to find people that don't know. I really don't know. Wow. So you're not working on it? No. And your husband didn't tell you? No. He knows what it is. <laughs> what's his name this year? I don't know. Whoa. <laughs> Well, if you're not going to be the head of your wife, what are you there for? <laughs> Tell them the theme this year right here. You had your hair, right? I actually had a question. Oh, that's not about the theme? Oh. About the, I think I know the theme, but I, asked, okay. I have a question also. Okay. Do you What's want me to theme? talk about the theme? What do you think the theme of there you had asked Isn't the Isn't it uh, disappearing? How to get yours um, to become not yourself or to... Is it something like that? At least you're walking down the road toward it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, you had your hand right. And then I'll come right back to you for the question. Yes. I think I remember you saying something about, like, you being, like, a little bit more um, brutal this year, like you was going to... No, what's the theme? Oh, I thought that was part of the theme. Oh, Lord. Oh, then I don't know then. You don't know either? No. Anybody that was here last week? Oh, what's the theme? for this year, the church theme? Uh, when we disappear, that heaven can appear? Absolutely. When you disappear, heaven will appear. The kingdom will appear. Isn't that amazing? That sounds so nice. Look like everybody would want to remember that. When you disappear, heaven will appear. You're in the way. It's already here, it's just that you don't see it because you're in the way. It's already at hand. So, yes, your question. I noticed that in a lot of your broadcasts, you always say, you consistently, I've heard you consistently say, reflect versus think about. Yes. And I want to know, is that intentional? And if so, what's the difference in your, in your mind between the two? Because when you reflect, you, you don't remember. You just reflect on, wow, I used to be this way or that way or... I remember I used to worry about that, and it is that. You don't hold on to anything. But when you remember, then you're holding on to it, and once you remember, it just turned into knowledge. It does, you're not supposed to hold on to anything. You should always keep the glass empty so that it can be filled with new revelation and new information. But so when you reflect, just remember, Wow, that was cool. I remember I used to be that way. Or I would normally be afraid of this, but I'm not afraid anymore. And just let it go. Don't compensate with the devil about it or anything. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. It does. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Okay. So I was thinking how uh, human nature is evil. You have no idea how wicked, if you knew yourself, you would know but how wicked human nature is. It is evil, it is wicked. And until you understand that you're not gonna ever deal with it in the right way, you will always be overtaken by it. And so I was thinking about how, when you flip through the TV, they have, they be advertised like drag queen shows. You ever seen that? They advertise, well, coming up next, drag queen show. And I was thinking, what is the purpose of having a drag queen show? A drag queen show means that a bunch of men on a stage in dresses and women make up and pretend to be a woman. Where's the fun in that? You know what I'm saying? Because you're sitting there, sitting there, and you know that these are men in dresses. So do your mind go away and make you think you're looking at women? A woman's show in dress? Right? And how did we get, what made them do that? What made the men decide, I'm going to dress up in a dress, I'm going to put on a drag queen show, and then I'm going to invite people to it, and people show up. They literally buy tickets to go to watch a man or woman in opposite clothes entertaining. How did that happen? I know how, I'm asking a question, but I know how it happened, but isn't it like amazing? I remember when I was growing up, and I would go to the city, like Gary and Anna somewhere, 
and there will be men, you will once in a while see a man walk down the road or somewhere in a dress, but everybody knew that that was an issue. That person got an issue. That person crazy. They would call them crazy. They didn't accept it as, okay, let's put on a drag queen show. Anybody ever been to a drag queen show? Don't be ashamed. <laughs> oh, you be, oh. And, <laughs> and don't judge. What made you decide to go, at, at, go to a drag queen show and what did you get from it? What were your mindset while you were watching a drag queen? Um, well, I won't say it was specifically um, just a drag show, but I used to be in the art world in LA and there was just a lot of, um, there was a lot of LGBT drag, I mean, near the end before I got out, there was a lot of stuff that was going in that direction. Right. So I went to a, an event once or twice that there were drag queens, there were trans people, and I think I went there just because, um, I just went there because kind of, I guess it was just like what everyone else was doing. I was going along with the crowd. And so while you're sitting there watching the drag queen show, were you thinking, this, these are men in dresses? Or did that just appear and you just enjoyed the show? I think the part of that world that I uh, enjoyed, that art world that included that stuff, was that it was so absurd that it was almost entertaining, right? It was almost like a... So the idea of it being men in dresses left you and you just sat there and enjoyed it? I think that... I'm trying to understand the mindset. Yeah, yeah. So I'll, tell you, a, I'll tell you, I'll tell you. It's not like a test or not to make you look bad. It's not that. Because I we all come from a father state, yeah, right? I don't, I'm not when worried about it When used to look good. You know yeah, what I'm saying? So totally. I'm just... Under, so did your mind... Did your normal mind disappear and you thought, wow, this is fun, and you forget that there are men up there in dresses? There's two parts to that answer, and I want to make it clear to you. Is, uh, one, I think, yes, there's a part of me then that wasn't the real me. I was very identified with something that was not me, the yeah. not me, right, that we call. I had a lot of different identities that were blocking what was truly in my heart. Right. Uh, and so in that moment, that was definitely happening. And I also think the justification, right? The devil in my head was telling me, oh, this is absurd, this is artistic, this is weird. But at the time, you weren't thinking that way, right? No, at the time, I thought it was absurd. But I didn't think it was, I didn't think absurdity or weirdness is necessarily negative. Oh, okay. Even now, I don't know if absurdity would be something I think is negative. Uh, but, um, and this is the last thing, I, I do think there's an element I want to add, as I look back now, it's very interesting that the drag queen thing is so accepted by, say, like the liberal side of the world because they also reject it's things like... It's not just accepted by the liberals, it's accepted promoted. by everybody. Yeah, but it's, it's interesting that... It's not, really, it's not just the liberals. It's the conservative, it's the Christians, it's the Democrats, it's the Republicans, yeah. it's the blacks, it's the whites, it's the red. Everybody accepting it now. Everybody. And then those who don't go and see it, they judge it. And that's the same thing as accepting it because they don't know how to just see it and not have an opinion of it. So it's not just a liberal thing. You're right in that sense. I, I, I guess the way I see, um, I think it's used for division, but that's a big, you know, I can't prove it. I just see it similar. I see drag or, or drag queens and the way it's set up. I see it similar to how people used to do blackface. It feels like it's fe a female version of blackface, like men doing female blackface. But and I'm yet just trying to understand the mindset at the time that you saw it. Yeah. So that's what, yeah, I, uh, I thought you? it was absurd, and I didn't think that, uh, I don't think I really thought much about it as, my, as the true me. It was very much an identity of the not me in the moment, just being there, not really recognizing that I think the true me was not okay with that. In the moment, it wasn't there. I was just in that moment, watching it, thinking it was a funny, absurd thing. Okay. And how about you? When you saw it, we're sitting there watching it, uh, you buy your ticket, you're like, oh, I'm getting dressed to go to the drag queen show. <laughs> what were you thinking, your mindset at the time? Uh, so at the time, I had friends who would do drag, and so I would go to events that they would throw. Um, but I will say that even though in my fallen state, when I would be there, I thought it was uncomfortable. Right. It made me feel uncomfortable. Oh, it did? Yeah. Even though you were watching it, you were there, you felt uncomfortable. Yeah, because I didn't... I couldn't understand it, right? Because like I was friends with these men who were men and they identified as men and operated in the world as men, but you know, they were gay and 
but then they would dress up in dresses and put makeup on and make it this whole event and it was very confusing. Oh, okay. I had no idea that one day it would be all on TV and be promoted like a normal show and, you, and they had commercials and everything. Another thing that I was thinking about is abortion. It's hard to, I just, I'm saying it's hard to believe, I totally understand it now, that you can literally promote abortion, killing children in the womb. It's a big promotion, you make big money from it, and there are truckloads of people who are willing not only to promote it, but to make money from it, and to kill the children in the womb. Have you ever thought about that mindset? How did anybody ever agree with abortion before? You have, when you agree, what made you, do you agree with abortion now? No. What type of mindset did you have that caused you to think abortion was fine? Uh, I was just talking to a friend about this the other day, and uh, it's perception, it's how you frame it. So it wasn't, I realize now it wasn't that I thought that I was promoting, like killing a baby, it was that I bought into the pro-choice, freedom of choice that. And so your mindset was you bought into the idea that it was freedom of choice, that a woman has a right to kill the man's baby in the womb. You know, I honestly didn't think of it that way. I didn't think that far ahead. Oh, you just thought of it as pro-choice, freedom. Yeah, oh. I, I know how. And you didn't like, go beyond that in thinking. No, I know how ignorant and naive that sounds. But yeah. Were you a Christian at the time? Yes. You were when you thought abortion was fine. Uh, yes, and I just from personal experience, I like I had friends who have. You have friends who, who have, have done it, and oh, I okay. can tell that, um, you know, to 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 go against that also made me feel like I was saying that what they did was wrong. Oh, amazing! Yes, sir. You thought it was right at one time. You went along with abortion. Yes, sir. And what? How, how do you feel about it now? Oh, it's evil. So why did you think, did you think before it was good, not evil? Yes. And were you a Christian at the time? No. And why did you think it was good at the time? Uh, really for promiscuity, just sleeping around and, you know. Oh, you thought abortion, so you can sleep with everybody? Yeah. You know, if something happens, what? it's like, all right, you know. Just, oh, I, oh, I see what you're right. saying. Right, you know what I'm saying. So you just want to have as much as sleep around as you want. And if, you want to, if a baby happened by chance in that, kill it. Correct. I understand that. And what do you think about your mindset now when you think about then how you were thinking? What caused you to think that way back then? I don't know if I could put a finger on it now, but I think just surrounding myself with friends who were also, you know, sleeping around and there's this aspect of like, hey, you know, there's always this plan C option that's, oh, that's kind of there. You know, so I think if anything, it was appealing to say that, hey, I don't have to have a kid out of wedlock if I don't have to, right, so. Amazing. And why do you think it's evil now? Well, Are you sure it's evil now? Yes. And how about if you played around and got somebody pregnant and she's like, uh-uh, oh, I'm giving a free choice. I'd have to take the responsibility. And do what? Well, if, if, if I have the, you know, confidence <clears throat> to, lay it down, I should have the same confidence to raise a child. And so, what changed your mind about it that is not good? I think it was a combination of both uh, listening to pastors appeal to a... Pastors. Right, you know. I uh, appeal to a... Pastors. <laughs> no, I'm the daughter of three pastors. No, two pastors. <laughs> my daddy, my mama, pastors. And she strongly support abortion. This woman I'm talking about. Well, true, true. Well, it, what, what changed my mind were other people, you know, that speaking changed. to me, appealing to a, uh, a, re a religious side of, you know, being uh, anti-abortion as well as science, you know, looking so at So what's it. wrong with abortion now? Well, look at it from both ways. I mean, um, clearly it's a man and a female, you know, contributing to a baby. So for a woman to just say it's her body, it's, it's not. It's not like something just you came know, out of nowhere. No, what's wrong with abortion? What's wrong with a woman killing a man's baby in the womb? 
Oh, well, then it's murder. How is it murder? Uh, this is a, a human to be, no different than like a, a human, say like in a coma, it may not be able to live on its own, it may not be able to breathe on its own, but in nine months you're going to have a living, breathing human being. And if you end that life, it's no different than killing somebody else who is alive. How about if the baby is retarded in the womb? Still, no different, you know, than, no different than all the people who were born disabled in the Bible and, and Jesus was healing them. You know, so different than people being born blind. They so still have a chance at life. It? Yeah. Oh, okay. Right. Amazing. Um, I used to have that mindset. I don't know if I ever thought of right, but it was okay if you wanted to do it. Because I remember once I uh, was dating a girl and really into her, and she got, well, she thought she was pregnant. And so she came and she said, well, I'm pregnant, I'm pregnant. I'm like, what the? <laughs> she like, I'm pregnant, you going to marry me? I'm like, no. <laughs> uh, that thing I wanted to do at that point was to be married, right? I was like, no. She was like, well, I'm going to abort the baby. I'm like, whatever. But my mindset was I didn't want to be tied down at the time, and I wasn't ready for a baby. And so I wasn't thinking, though I knew it was wrong, but I wasn't thinking of it as being wrong. All right. I just didn't want a baby. So that was my mindset on that at the time. Isn't that amazing? It's in the mind. The mind is messed up. It's really messed up. You got to overcome the mind. And so that's why, even the, I was thinking of, I had interviewed this guy, and I think he spoke at one of our events. His ex-wife is going out of her way, according to the report, to make sure that the boy body part is taken off and girl part put on. And so uh, 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 in the recent news, they lived in Texas where you couldn't do that in Texas. And so California changed the law where you can do that now in California, apparently. You can change the boy body part to a girl body part, a girl body part to a boy body part. And so the mother of the child moved to California, according to the report, so that she could have her son castrated like that, mutilated, or whatever you call it. Isn't that like a me? Just think of that mindset, how the devil is working that. Just think about how the devil has her mind and she doesn't realize that's what it is. I never, when I was in the fallen state, I never thought of the devil having my mind. I never thought of it uh, as being, I was possessed with the devil. I always thought the devil would be something like, uh, what do I think the devil would look like if I saw him? Like crazy people, you know, people walking down the road talking to themselves or, or somebody that has some, What's the name of that disease they had in the Bible? Leprosy. Leprosy. And you can see it, right? And you kind of know they're possessed. But the devil come in what looked like simple, nice ways. He looked like loving ways in the mind and the way people treat each other. And the devil is wicked. And as a result, human heart is wicked. It cannot be trusted. It's worse than what you can even imagine. And as you wake up and overcome the darkness, you're going to see the wickedness in yourself that you overcome, but you're going to see it in other clearly. You will really see it, and that's your protection. You will see it not to hate it, but you will see it to be protected, to be protected from it. And you don't walk around all day thinking, oh, I see a wicked person. I was talking to Doug this morning about down the street there, uh, there's a homeless encampment somewhat by the car dealership down there and it was so many over there at one time they made them move across the street to the next to the Jewish center so you got a bunch of them by the car center and the Jewish center and the other morning I was driving in to work and they had a big blazing fire going on the sidewalk I'm like this is amazing they had a fire they were trying to keep warm right because it was raining and cold and I'm like what would happen if a spark a fire was to set off the Jewish Center or the electric wire and homes around the area can burn down and businesses can burn down. And I wonder, why don't they make these people move? And so I asked the neighbor down there, why don't you make these people move? And he said, I can't. The law says that they can be there. It's against the law that would, uh, whatever, right? And I'm like, oh, that's one law. I ain't going to say, I'm going to jail. <laughs> 
some law you just have to be willing to go to jail for, right? If somebody come here and they do do it and try to set up a camp for my business, I ain't putting up with that. I'm just not gonna put up with it. And that's a way to deal with it when you don't have to put up with it. You know, just sit back quietly and do nothing. This is your business. You bought the company. You own the company. And some stupid politician passed a law that says some person on drugs or insane, whatever, can come and set up shop on the, on the sidewalk right in front of your building? And you got to put up with it? Uh-uh. No way, no way, Jose. But what mindset, as I was saying to Doug this morning, what mindset of the lawmakers that they decided to tell the folks, y'all can live on the streets, do drugs, and matter of fact, we're going to give you the drugs. You can do this in front of somebody else's business, and we're going to pass a law to make sure they do it. What's the mindset of the politicians that's doing that? And Jared made this, the point that, well, they're not putting it in front of their businesses and their homes. It's somebody else. But if we put up with that, it's just going to get worse. And okay, the politicians said okay, but we don't have to say okay to everything. You know what I mean? I, I don't know if I told you about that. Should I tell this story? I may go to jail, but I'll tell it. <laughs> Am I going to go to jail? I don't know what story you're about to tell. Oh, about a homeless person in front of the building. Uh, go ahead. Huh? Remember that homeless story? Don't do it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I like this story. And remember y'all were scared to do somebody? And I said, okay. Go ahead and tell that story. Oh, okay. <laughs> Self-snitching. That's Self right. <laughs> so it was this homeless woman. She was out there. Uh, on the street making a little camp right in front of the business and she handcuffs herself to the tree out there <laughs> and so I was on and doing counseling I was interviewing or something on the phone and so a couple of the workers came up the guys they said oh there's a homeless person out there I said oh, okay go tell them to move and so they went out there you gotta move <laughs> <laughs> and the homeless person said I ain't going nowhere a little Spanish woman <laughs> She said, I'm not going anywhere. And then so I said, okay, then send a couple other guys out there to tell her. So two, two groups of guys went out there, you got to move. And she's like, I ain't going nowhere. And she had a cell phone and everything. I said, okay, don't worry. Let me finish what I'm doing. I'll go out there. She'll move. So I went out there and I said, you got to move. You're not going to sit here in front of my business like this. I ain't going nowhere, senor. I said, oh, yeah, you moving. <laughs> And then I said, that you can't be in I can't. It's the law. I could be here. No, you can't. You're not going to be here. I don't stay here, senor. And so she pulled out her cell phone like she going to videotape me. And I said, what's that? That's my cell phone videotaping you. That's so good. I want you to know, if you don't pick up your stuff and move right now, I'm going to cut your arm off. <laughs> and I'm going to throw you out in the street, and then you won't be in my business. And the handcuffs will stay, but you're going. And I'm going black like mad on you. <laughs> that woman hurried up and ran. She hurried up and left. I haven't seen her since. There's things you can do. But you have to do it, be smart about it. You know what I'm saying? I said, I'm going black like mad on you. <laughs> See, black like mad are good for something. <laughs> So, but you got to be wise. You got to see when and how and where, and not be all angry and lost in your mind and, and give it into anger. Because whenever you give it into anger, you're gonna do it. You're gonna make the wrong decision every time. But there's a way out of everything. It's a way to overcome everything. And so I was trying to understand, the, just reflected on the mindset of all these things I'm seeing happening, and the people accepting them. Because as you understand how your mind works, you're going to understand the mindset of others, too. And it's going to be impossible for you to get angry. Once you have true understanding, no matter what the situation is, you will, it will be impossible to get angry. You will be able to speak up and deal with, you know, with the situation, but you will not, will not get angry because the spirit of anger, which is of the devil, will be taken away from you. God does not want us to argue with the devil in the imagination and thoughts, and he doesn't want you to argue with the devil and others. That's what the devil wants. He wants you to argue because when you argue, he has control. He has control of you. Don't argue with the devil. 
All right. Okay, I saw this hand first and then here. Yes. I've done that too. People in the sometimes people hang out in the alley back there getting high. Yeah. And there's you know there's those apartments over there have kids, so sometimes I'll come out and I'll see somebody just kind of like almost hiding, you know, and so I'll tell them you you got to go. And it, it's not even on our property right here. It's it's in that apartment over there. And I'll just tell them you got to. And they free they they really go off. But I notice that if I just if I'm just hold my ground, if I just hold my ground, they're yeah. In a few minutes, you look out the window, they're gone. There is unseen power in love, not emotional love, but God's love. You don't see it, you don't feel it, you don't take credit for the outcome. But something happens when you are of love. God loves us. He take care of us. Satan loves you in his way. He destroys you, right? God loves us, and he will take care of his children. There was a woman laying out there the other day in front of us. She was just uncomfortable. And I was leaving the building, so I'm driving down the road. I looked over, I saw her laying there, sun going down. So I turned around, and I went and parked my car. I said, hey, you cannot sleep here tonight. What? You cannot sleep here tonight. And she got ticked. You are misogynist. <laughs> I'm like, so, but so how a homeless person, where did they get that word from? <laughs> how does a homeless person know about misogyny? Did she go to school or something? <laughs> and then she said, you're a misogynist. You're not supposed to talk to a woman like this, like that. I said, you know what? I don't go, what? This misogynist telling you, you're not going to sleep in front of my building. You got to go. And she grabbed the bar and stuff and ran. And she was yelling and screaming, but she took off. And I left. I haven't seen her since. You got to stay calm. You got to be of love. There's a real love with real power. But you don't feel the power. You don't take credit for it. You're not ego tripping with the power. You're just living your life. Just like you live for the devil, you can truly live for God. And just like at one point you didn't know you were living for the devil, you don't think, oh, I'm living for God. I'm doing this because God is with me. You don't think that. All thoughts about God are from the devil. All thoughts about God are from the devil. God is not of thoughts. That makes sense a little bit? Okay, yes, sir. While, while I want to share a similar homeless story, I'll skip over it because I had a question for you. Um, before you told the story, you mentioned something about uh, the devil corrupting our hearts. But then I've heard you say also that the devil um, lives in the mind. Yes. Right? So I guess I, I'm curious how you square those two things. Does he live in the mind and the heart? Does he corrupt the heart through the thoughts? Because the heart is of, right? God's love is of the heart. It's like the, that's what you talk about. So I'm wondering... Um, when you talk about corruption of the heart, is it like the darkness that you have to fight back within the heart that comes from the mind? Could you expand on that? Is that? That's a good question. Um, the heart, our true heart, our spirit, true spirit is of God, is of his nature. But when you have anger, you, you're separated from that nature. And then you're living in the imagination of the devil. And that's where the uh, and because you have anger, which is of the devil, everything about you is wicked. And so when I say that salvation is of the heart, what God does is take the spirit of the devil away from you. And I don't mean like the blood pumping heart. I'm talking about your natural spiritual nature. He take it from that so he can divide you from the darkness of the imagination, which is of the devil, and he would take because in all, like the devil, the devil is only of your, how can I explain how the devil operates through the heart? The devil have you in a delusion thinking that this stuff you feel and think is real, the fake love and the, the, the fear and the doubt and the worry and all that. That's not him. But it's the imagination that you're living in that you have identified with the spirit of the devil instead of the spirit of God. So when you see that you're wrong for playing God by having anger, then what God would do is take that spirit away from you, and then he would shine light on the darkness of the imagination so that you could start to see that that never was you, the thoughts were never yours, 
It has never been you. It's just that you identify with the imagination, with the thoughts. And so once he takes out that spirit of the devil from the spirit, from his spirit, it's hard to explain. That's a good question, man. It's so deep that it kind of, it's hard to explain. But I'm talking about the spirit of God, which is a perfect love, and the spirit of the devil, which is a fate love. And the spirit of the devil love come from the imagination. It's all about the emotion. You're not your emotions. You're, not, you're never emotion. You're not one of your emotions. But because you identify with it by identifying with imagination, you cannot identify with the non-emotions, which is just logic, common sense, and love. You, it's, it's hard to explain the difference, except for the two different spirits. But you will see it once you truly overcome it. But it's a good question, man. Amazing. <laughs> um, anything else? Any other questions? How many people? Yes. I was thinking about um, when I was a young man, when we went out to uh, protest against abortion at the abortion clinic, and uh, this has been told that this is a woman's issue, and so men are not supposed to have anything to say about it at all whatsoever. And so when this one girl came in, and she was all angry, and she was like saying, you know, are you going to take care of the baby? And I told her, all those that I make, I'm going to take care of, just like I think you should take care of all the ones that you guys make, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And um, I, I don't think ever at a time I thought that this was okay. I remember when I was young, my cousin um, got pregnant when she was like about 12, and my mom flipped out about it, you know, and worried about, you know, so it like put the fear in me of, you know, getting a pregnancy, like as a teenager and stuff like that. And so that fear kept me for a long time from doing that. But, so um, you had the fear you thought it was okay to have the abortion? No, I, the fear of getting a, a girl pregnant, oh, pregnant. caused oh, okay. me to right. not have it happen. <laughs> but my whole thing is I want you to understand the mindset so that you'll pay more attention to your imagination, meaning that you'll stand back and watch it. And you will start to see that you really, 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 really are not the imagination. And then hopefully when you see it clearly, you will stop protecting the devil. Because what I notice is that, and I talk to a lot of people, most people protect the devil. When you protect the ego, you're protecting the devil. You're really worshiping the devil. When you're on the run, when you're afraid, when you have doubt, when you worry, when you're emotional, you're protecting the devil. You're like worshiping the devil. All in the name of Jesus. Yes. And then I want to get to the biblical question. So um, two, two items, two things. I noticed that, uh, that there are a lot of people, politicians, uh, they have compassion for people that are homeless on the streets. Their compassion, and they feel sorry for them, so they don't have a place to stay. Let them stay on the sidewalk. Let's give them money, and, and let's take care of them on the street. But that's not compassion. They hate the homeless. Uh, what I noticed about the... There's the people who are the social movements, whether it's about affirmative action, reparations, or the civil rights movement, or abortion movement, or um, illegal alien movements, or women's right movement, all kind of movements. Those movements are set up because they hate the people. They have no compassion for them at all. And if you really, really pay attention to it, the people don't get better. But the people who are heading up the uh, social movements, they're getting rich. They're living in an amazing neighborhood. They have a lot of money. They do things. And so they, they have no compassion for you at all. They have none. It's a way for them to get wealth. And because you are not your own person, you fall for the social movement, and you give up your wealth, and you stay poor. You feel good about helping feed the hunger or have a shelter for the hunger, or toy drive, or whatever. You're feeling good about it, not knowing the people playing your ego. They're getting wealthy from it. It's like sending your children to the public school system. The people who encourage you to send your children to a public school, they're not sending their kids there. They're going to private schools. They're, they have security guards and armed guards at school. They're fine, but you feel good because you don't want to leave one child behind. You don't want to make a child feel bad by sending your children to a public school. So you keep your kids in the school, not paying attention to see that, well, the people who are telling me to send my children to a public school, why don't they send theirs? 
And they're not sending their children to these schools, but you feel so good thinking that you're helping, you sacrifice your children. Isn't that amazing? They don't have any compassion. If they had compassion and they thought what they were doing was good, they'll send their kids there too. Oh, here's an example. My kids are in these bad schools too, but their kids are not there. Nobody got wealthy from the civil rights movement but the so-called civil rights leaders. The blacks are still fighting and begging, and they're worse off today. They're not independent. They stopped creating. They used to be very independent. They bought land. They, uh, even with the black schools, universities and things like that, they were amazing schools because they worked on their own schools because they didn't have leaders telling them not to do it. Go break down the white school. They don't care about, social leaders don't care about you. They have zero compassion. They're not trying to make the hotel people rent out their rooms or, or go, government money for the hotel at the home. Those no people are going to destroy those rooms. And who's going to be left with the bills and the heartaches? The hotel owners. What y'all thinking? <laughs> Why y'all looking crazy? Yeah. OK. Um, yes. So the reason they, they do have compassion is because they're a tool, and they use them. <clears throat> they use them because they get money from the taxes and stuff like that. And That's so they, not compassion? They, it, it is for Satan. That's compassion for Satan. Oh. And they use that money to, to become uh, very, very powerful. And uh, another point uh, was uh, uh, James's girlfriend that was on video. Well, we don't want to talk about James's girlfriend. What the? And so she said, they asked hey, her, this is not James, girl. Are. It's not. It's not. It was, oh. it was on your show. And on your show, there was a homeless sorry, woman. Jim, I can't stop him. And this homeless woman. Can uh, you just drop it? This, this, this homeless woman it. asked her, what is it? Why are you out here? And, they, she, and she said, they give us breakfast. They give us lunch. So we get high between then. And then they give us dinner. And we go get high. And we, get, we party. And she said, I'm just telling the truth. Oh, you calling the homeless woman James' girlfriend? James called it his girlfriend. Uh oh. <laughs> he mentioned it. Huh? <laughs> what the? <laughs> and oh, she, I see what you're saying. Yeah, she, we played it on my show. This yeah, homeless she, woman said, well, asked, why are you on the streets or something? And she said, because it's easy. Mm -hmm. You get free food. You, you, get get the, you can come back home and get high. You go get breakfast. Get you high. come back home and get high. And then you go back to get some lunch, and then you come back and get high. You don't have to clean up, you don't have to do anything. And then you go get dinner, and then you come back and get high. And go, and go party. It, I'm moving on the street. What? I call her mildly attractive, maybe that's why you Oh. I can't help what he likes. Every man has his point. You messed up your story. There's no insight in that one. Uh, yes, ma'am. I think I saw some hands over here, too. Oh, OK. Anyway, OK. Yes. Speak from the chest. OK. I just have a nice. question. Thanks. Um. <laughs> <laughs> we had Francisco on the radio show Friday. And he said, right at the mic, like this. <laughs> and, and hey, because somebody texted me, like, tell that man to speak from the chest. OK. Um, so as a creative person, how do you tap into your creativity and your imagination? Use it as a tool and create, and when you're done with that project, be done with it. Don't live by it. It's just a tool. That make sense? But don't make a home in there. You want to create a whatever game, video game, right? And you think about how you want this video game to go, and you want it to be this way, that way, that way. And once you're done with it, be done with that. Move on. You don't live in it. You don't believe in it. It's not your identity. Don't, do not get an identity from it. That's how you can do it. Good question. Yes. And then I think, Raymond, you'll be next. OK. Um, I just want to. Add on if you if you're creative. I mean, no, I'm a, don't add on. I, I'm going to yeah, tell take me what you raise your hand about. I, 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 no, 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 no. It's really it, important. No, I mean, I'd rather not say my point. Important. All right, then I won't and say. Tell it. her later. Okay. Tell me about what you you had your hand before that. Though. I, I did. It's just when you were saying that, it's very uh, it's very poignant. I, um, yeah, I know. That's don't do pointing it. 
Hey, that's fine. We're going to be serious this year. Hey, we can be, be serious. We're going to be walking around the water at the end of this year. But go ahead. We can be serious. About the first thing you had to hand about. That's fine. Um, well, now we've gone through it. Um, the, the homeless situation. When you were talking about um, the woman on the show making it easy, yeah, they had something about a year ago of the guy in San Francisco who said, this is 100% a choice that I'm making. I get $600 between EBT and government assistance, or 600 government assistance cash. Yeah. I get 200 EBT, I get a Obama phone, I can get Netflix and you know whatever on social media, I'm in this tent, the cops can't take my tent. They come and they say, hey, maybe if you guys would move, we wouldn't have to come visit you every morning. And they say, we don't care if you visit us because you ain't moving anything. Yeah. He said 100%, it is a choice. I made, I made this choice because it's easier and better for me. If That's they right. took away my benefits, I would give up homelessness right now. I don't blame the homeless people. I mean, I don't blame the government for the homeless people living the way. I blame each adult individual for it. Because just because somebody offers you a free phone and say you can lay out on the street and smoke drugs, what's wrong with you that you're giving into that? If they want to make money off you and you let them make the money, that's your problem that you're living on the street. Just think about that. You, you decide today, you know what, I want to live on the street. And you go out there and get a free phone and free this and free that. That's not the government's fault. The government is using you and you're using them. You're out on the street, but you're still using them. That's what you want. That's the wickedness of the heart. And in life, everybody in that fallen state, everybody trying to get something from somebody. Not one person is together as friends or husband and wife or children or anything. When you have an ego, you're trying to get something from that person. They try to get something from you, and you try to get something from them. Have you ever thought about that? What do you think about that? That is so deep when you see it. But what do you think? And honestly, I want, we want real fellowship. It's just fellowship. It's not a test. It's, it's just honesty fellowship. We're going to get, we're going to walk on water this year. As Hassan said on the, on, the, on the moon, walking on water. What do you think about it? Ain't nobody together. They try to get something from each other. I agree. And why do you agree? Just based on when I re reflect, on my life nice. before I <clears throat> got introduced to what you're talking about. And, um, you know, just thinking back on my motivations in relationships and friendships, and I didn't, I didn't know, though. Right. I didn't know. I, right. I was just blindly, you know, just maneuvering. Absolutely. But I do have a question. Even a in question. friendships, and hold that question in there. Okay. Here. Even sure. with friendships, simple friendship, ain't nobody in the world just a friend. You're a friend because you want something back, even in a friendship. And the proof is, one of some of the proof is, if you were just a friend, if you disagree with that friend, you would never get mad. You would. Uh, uh, Whatever, whatever that friend did, it would be on that friend and not you, and it wouldn't bother you at all. If they didn't give you friendship back, it wouldn't bother you because you don't need it back. You're only friend. That's why friendships don't last because as soon as the friendship ends in any kind of way, a battle starts. You used to be friends with me. Now you're friends with her. You used to talk to me about your problem. Now you're talking to him. So what does that have? I'm just your friend. You don't want to talk to me about it? Fine. I don't need that back. You're never going to have it until you become whole. It ain't nobody into nothing without something back. You want something back. You want something from that person. Friendship, love, the other thing with the three letters, uh, something. Make me feel good. You don't, you don't appreciate me. You don't, you don't care about my emotions. Women say that a lot. You are not listening. I'm tired of listening. <laughs> you don't care about my emotions. I sure don't. But the average man is not going to say I sure don't. 
Because, you know, she got, got beat her up. She got to beat him up. But if you didn't want anything from that man and he didn't want anything from you, whether it's friendship, marriage, courtship, or whatever, you will literally have a relationship that will last until death do your part. In the wedding vows, it says, until death do your part. But you can't do it because you want something. You're not supposed to want anything. You only want something because something is missing. You're not a whole person. You want something. Isn't that amazing? Interesting. We had a deep fall of faith, as she was saying, we just didn't know. I was asking God the other day, I was like, how was I supposed to know all this? We just didn't know. Nobody told us. Our parents didn't tell us. The preacher didn't tell us. The school teacher didn't tell us. We didn't see examples of that. How would you know? And you're so angry, you forgot the truth because you knew it at one time. It's in us. But we just forgot because we were angry. Yes. You had another question. I was going to ask, um, I'm really struggling with uh, all thoughts are all lies all of the time. Right. I like to be in solitude often at home when I'm cleaning or whatever it is I'm doing. And what do you, like I just feel like I don't know what to do with myself because I don't know, I want to think about things, <laughs> but... I, I feel like I can I feel like that's the enemy now coming in and even if it's a good thought I, like I feel like I'm so aware like hyper aware of my thoughts now to the point where it's almost I feel like I'm crazy <laughs> in a way like, because you feel like you want to be doing something you got to be thinking something or feeling something have something going on are you saying that yeah because as the other as that young lady over there was saying I work in a creative industry so I'm always thinking about what, what do I do next? How do I, you know, strategizing and this or that. Or a lot of times I'm just thinking. I just want to think. I just want to fantasize a little bit about I understand it. whatever it is. Nice. You know, furniture, whatever it is. Well, this young lady want to respond first, and then I come back to it. <laughs> she can relate to it. Um, I think I can totally understand. Um, So that was, I was probably in that place maybe about five months ago or so where, okay, even the good thoughts, it took me a while to realize that actually all thoughts are lies because I was in that place for a while or before that where I thought, well, the good thoughts are fine. Um, I think if you're thinking about creative things, because I'm quite like that as well, thinking ahead, strategizing, if they're practical thoughts, then fine. But I think if it's creative... I think it's okay, but I think that, generally speaking, you need to put your mind where your body is, as hard as that is to do. Okay. Amazing. The young lady next to you had to find that. I'll put my little two cents in. Yeah. What do you think about that? Are you a creative person too, right? I am, yes. Yeah. Um, I think that it's it's kind of like what Jesse says. It's like it's more of a practical thought, right? Because as a creative individual, and if your <coughs> career is in creativity, then you need that to you know you need to have solutions. You need to have ideas. You need to bring things to the table. So I see it more as a practical thought, and I don't trust the daydreams anymore as my inspiration. It's like it comes as more of like a knowing, um, which I don't know if that helps answer your question. Um, but for me, I did really struggle with the all thoughts are all eyes all the time as well. <coughs> and um, I think that once I just accepted that that was the truth, then it, I didn't worry anymore about it and try to like understand and put in a box. Well, is this thought a lie or is that thought a lie? It, you just have to let go. Do we have other create? Are you a creator? Okay, we have another. Okay. Uh, you, you had your hand to that? Let me see all the creative people. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six. You a creative person too? I'm a crafty. Ooh, crafty. <laughs> <laughs> and and you and you you a creator? Okay, interesting. Yes, you're a creator. And your response to her is what? I am. You had to hand about that, right? I am the creator, yes. I am the creator. <laughs> One thing I noticed this is about a month ago. Uh, my neighbor 
at my mom's house has these dogs. And I fell in love with these dogs, had nine puppies. And so I'm living in a little one bedroom apartment. And so I'm, I like these puppies so much that I wanted three of them. I think I told you about it. Yeah. And I was ready to adopt them. And I, was, I noticed in myself, my ego was so drawn to them because you know, puppies are fun and playful. Uh, you know, they grow up and they're terrible because you got to take care of them. They need attention. And I realized about my ego, it was just my desire. And the same ego that wanted the dogs is the one that wanted the girlfriend and wanted that fancy car. And well, how did it have, are you thinking of creating some puppies? Uh, <laughs> We're well, talking about creativity. Is, they are creators. Asked, I am creator, but you asked me about, you know, the young lady situation. How do you get over this uh, desire to, to have a, you know, a wife or a husband, girlfriend, or a car? Right, and and the, the way you go, the way you go Kill through it is uh, is not to uh, not so fast, <laughs> not to fall to it, not to fall to it, and to hold back and just kind of look at it, and and that's what I did. I kind of held back and just looked at the desire to have the dogs. I said, you know what, I don't really need to feed these dogs. It's okay, not, it's well, not you kind of on to something there. It's not but I don't know me. about how you're gonna create puppies. So Did you, you ask me, I am creative, uh, and then I'm answering the young lady's question, because the, the topic was, how do you get over the, the desire for a relationship? No, she wasn't, uh-uh, you got the wrong subject. That's what she was talking no, about. No, she was saying that, how do you accept all thoughts, all lies, all the time? Because she creates things she's in her job, she creates things and stuff like that again. And, and when she is in that mode of no thoughts, it feels like she got to be thinking something. She got to be, feel, it just feel like nothing, right? Am I saying it right? Yeah. Okay. And so she want to know, how do you deal with that and be a creator? So the same way you deal with that is the way I dealt with this desire to have, to have these, you know, puppies. Is to not, <laughs> is to not, okay. you know. Thank you. Good try though. Yes, uh, and then we we'll come back this way. And so you're a creator too. Well, I make I make websites, so I, I'll call that creating. So you are a creator. Yeah. Okay. And how do you live? How do you work with no thoughts? All thoughts are all lies all the time, and yet be a creator. Interesting. Um, you did have your hands, right? Well, when you asked for a creator, I didn't say I knew the answer to the question. Oh. oh okay. <laughs> but one thing that I will say to her is that there are times when an idea pops in my head about something that I was working on before, and sometimes maybe I'll write it down or, or I'll maybe go try it. Um, but but usually what happens is I just you, I try to just let it go. Because what I've learned is that I am best, if I don't try to hold on to all this stuff, I am best doing my work in that moment when I'm sitting at my desk, supposed to be working. There are times when ideas come and I may write them down, but most of the time I just let it go and I want it to be fresh when I start again. So for me, that's, that's one way I deal with trying to be creative in my mind. Okay. Well. A lot of help that was. <laughs> no, yes, and then here, and then here, and then over there. All right, we're coming. I'm looking at the clock. I'm trying to get everything in. We're going to walk on water this year. Yes, well, a, since, a, a, yeah. a, a creator. Go ahead. Or since we were talking about like judging your thoughts, or sorry, that's not what you said, but that's what it seems like. That it's Is hard that... to believe that all thoughts are all lies all okay. the time. How do you do that and still be creating on your job and? and not feel like you gotta be something. Well, I don't know the exact answer to that, but when you said that you thought you were going cr like a little crazy, I feel that way too. And, um, but then I, re I have to remind myself that when I call myself crazy, then I'm also judging my thoughts. Oh, so when you are in a moment where you're not into thoughts and nothing's there, you feel like you're crazy? Um, more that um, if thoughts are coming in and out of my head and then I, I'm trying to stop them okay. and, I f and I'm like, oh, I'm being crazy for thinking that or 
why can't I stop from thinking? Right on. Um, then I real, I'm like, oh, I'm judging myself right now, and that's actually not, that's even worse than thinking. Oh, nice, okay. Uh, we'll get back, another creator. You're a creator, right? Okay. Uh, it's nice to hear you speaking up. I remember when you first came, you like, I love a little Chinese. I knew you could do it. Doesn't that feel better to speak up? Oh, hold on. So what now? Like, I, I could hear my wow, voice no, that's through awesome. the speakers. Nice, huh? <laughs> da, 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 da. That's not the real person. Go ahead. I, I'm yelling like I would yell at my boyfriend. Like, that's right. Recommend it. That's right. <laughs> Doesn't it feel better to be speaking up, though? People can hear you. Um, Doesn't it feel a little freeing? freeing? I don't know. Because they don't allow the women in China to speak up, right? <laughs> Are you Chinese? Yes. They don't allow you to speak up in China, right? Uh, I mean, I grew up pretty much here. Oh, good. So. Okay. You grew up white. <laughs> <laughs> like a white woman. <laughs> nice. Okay. Well, practice speaking up. Okay. All right? Yeah. Yes. You, what are you, you're a creator. Yes. And, and so what do you think about the idea that all thoughts are all lies all the time, and here you are trying to create something? Uh, I relate to what everyone's saying about feeling crazy, but doubting every thought actually makes the creativity easier. In what um, way? In that the same way that li life doesn't need you to happen, it, it, life is effortless in the sense that it'll go on without you, uh, creativity is the same way. Creativity he is doesn't. one hundred percent right. Creativity doesn't need you to happen. That's it needs right. you to witness it and. Uh, that's why your most creative moments is almost the perfect zenith of unconsciousness because you're actually in perfect alignment with what you're supposed to be doing in the moment is that. So you created the perfect thing and then if you're trying to create, it's, it's just not in alignment. So. 100% right. But it's all effortless. Yeah. From this day forward, never think of yourself as a creator. The idea that you think you're a creator is from hell. Because if you think you're a creator, you're gonna think that you're creating and that you got to do it. But if you didn't have the thought of being a creator, then it will come naturally, it'll be beautiful. It'll be easy, it'll be beautiful, it'll be perfect. But, so you're not a creator, you're the daughter of God, you're the spirit of God. You're not a creator. And he is creating through you. And so all the credit, would, without even thinking it or saying it, would naturally go to him because you would be amazed at the talent that would come from you. What do you think about that? Yeah. Something just clicked when yeah. he said that. Thank you. All thoughts are set up. All thought will give you a false image of yourself and other people and the world around you. Because all thoughts are from hell. You have a natural talent that comes from God. He creates all things. He's involved in all things. And he will create through you. And what you, whatever you do, designing or whatever, you will, you will be present while doing this designing. And it, and it would be, if, if it's a job or you're doing it for yourself, it would just be that, but you won't identify with it. And when you're done with it, you'll be at peace and the work will be perfect. All right, so stop thinking of yourself as a creator. There's only one creator. There's only one spirit, and that's God. And he worked through us. Anybody disagree with that? You can if you, if you do. Okay, that makes sense. He wants you to be free, and he got you. He said, don't even look for your talent. Your gift will find you. And so if you, were, I know, you he take pictures and do that. He went to a wedding and take pictures. They'll turn out perfectly. If you just stood there and watch and be present, watch what he's doing, the picture would turn out, and everybody, their mama, even Reagan, Reagan would call her from the grave to take some more pictures. It would be, it, work would come from everywhere. That's what I mean by that, because it would be perfect work. So don't think of yourself as anything. You're not a creator. Only one creator, and that is God. But Satan tells you that you are a creator. It's like when the, when the wife or the mother made dinner, and she's like, oh, happy, sweating in the kitchen. And then the, the husband and kids come home, and it's happy dinner, and the kitchen food smells good. And they go to eat, and they go, ugh. And she get mad. <laughs> I'm like, what? Mommy, this doesn't taste right. This is too salty, or this is too sweet, or this. 
you know, I've been sweating and she, I, I created this meal. She find fault in it. But if she did it just as a talent, a thing to do, if they find fault in it, it wouldn't even bother. And that's how the meal would be fine. That makes sense? You got to get rid of ideas. All ideas, all thoughts, all this stuff that you think you want is wrong. They all come from the devil all the time. As long as you believe in thoughts. What do you think? What? I, I believe that. You believe it? Yeah. And so are you a creator too? I mean, what do you define as a creator? Not you. Me? <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I mean, we We're all not create creator. things every day. I mean, what? you create a meal, right? Does that make you a creator? No, you don't create the meal. You cook it. That's creating it. Right, you I mean, cook I don't it, go but to the who farm made it possible for you to cook it? What? I mean, yeah, you still create it. You're no. still making it. Okay. Then I guess I'm Okay, here's what, here's what I, I want you to do. <laughs> Let prove me wrong, come back next Sunday okay. and say you were wrong. Make a meal without any ideas. And see how much you create. Okay. Probably nothing. Right. Because I have to have a concept of it. And yeah. God give us a, God give us a, when we are hungry, where that desire for hunger come from? It's from God. That's true. Mm -hmm. The taste bud is from God. Yeah. <laughs> We're not in control of anything. And you're gonna see this when you start to really overcome thoughts. We as you're overcoming and, and knowledge disappear, let knowledge die, as you overcome and thought, wisdom appear, and you will see, wow, I've never been in control of anything. It has always been from him. No wonder I've been struggling in life. Because I thought I was the creator. I thought I was this, or I thought I was that. I thought I was no good, or I thought I was good. I thought I wasn't attractive. I thought I was attractive. It's all thoughts. I thought I knew God, but I didn't know God. You don't know God through thoughts. You can read the Bible and still not know God. Because the devil is going to give you the thoughts about what you read. Satan is in the thoughts. That's why God said, bring every thought into captivity. All thoughts, all lies, all the time about anything. You can't even have a thought or an idea about God. You will know him. You won't have any ideas about him. Yes. For me, when I was, when I listened to you say all thoughts are all lies all the time, and in the beginning stages when I was struggling with it, I think that I started to watch the thoughts. And I think it's important to watch the thoughts. And w the more you become aware, the more you start to see, like when she said that she f starts to feel crazy, that's not you. That is not you. You wouldn't make yourself feel crazy. You wouldn't think of yourself as being crazy. So the more you watch the thoughts, the more that you see that it's not you. And that brings in more awareness. And awareness is everything. And to add to that, when you're in that moment, when you don't, when you don't feel, you have no pain, no worry, and there's nothing there, in that moment when you have it, and then Satan is trying to tell you, feel it. you need to be doing something. You need to be thinking something. You need to be feeling. In that present moment is where God is. And that's where you are, and that's where you want to be. And to go back into the imagination, because Satan is trying to put it's a false illusion. It's, it's not true. It's an illusion of who you are and what you're thinking and what you should be feeling. And you're somebody. You're nobody in, that, in the imagination. You are somebody in the presence of God. When you feel like you know, when there's nothing there to identify with, then you are who you are. You're with the Father. The mic, please. So when you're in solitude, you yourself, like, what, is your mind just blank then? You just have a blank the mind, just, when I'm in present, mm -hmm. there are no thoughts. Okay. There are no feelings, no thoughts, nothing. But because I understand it now, it's paradise. I know now that, and, and then even when I'm in the present, I don't call that an, an identity. I don't try to identify with it. I don't try to get something from it. It just is. And the thoughts are out there somewhere, gone or whatever they are. But it just is, and I'm totally fine. Because now I know that all the thoughts are lies, and I'm nobody in the imagination, but the devil wants you to think you're somebody, but you're not. Okay. All right. I'm still <laughs> so, working on that one. Yeah, just, just be patient with it. it. 
you're right. Be patient with it. And when, you, when there are no thoughts, and, no, and don't try to make, don't you try to make yourself not have thoughts. You be aware of them, and the light of God will destroy the darkness, because the darkness hates the light. It will destroy the darkness, and nothing left but the present. Okay. Okay. All right, so just notice it. Don't freak out. And you will. I remember when Joel first did that. We, we were, I said, Joel, why don't you just keep your mind with your body right now? And you're like, oh, okay. And so we were sitting there talking, and he just kept the mind. He's like, I don't like this. <laughs> like what the, there's nothing to think about there's nothing to feel there's nothing to identify with and the ego love having something to identify with because it's of the devil amazing huh yes sir did you have your hand I did earlier although oh. I remember Raymond also had his hand up way before me oh yeah well thank you mama <laughs> Raymond thanks dad <laughs> I forgot about Raymond. Thank you, Ma. About my baby had his hand up. <laughs> Look at Raymond over there with a half. I feel so sorry for Raymond. Mm -hmm. Why don't Jesse get to Raymond? Mm -hmm. I wonder how Raymond is feeling. I know. Oh, Mama. Let me raise my hand and tell Jesse to get to Raymond. <laughs> First, I want to say thank you. It's like the parents do with the kids. One more time. One more time. It's like the parent with the kids. If I say something to the kids and the parents, the kids don't say anything, tell them, just talk to me. <laughs> just to say something to you. Like, Mama, leave the child. How the child gonna grow up and the child don't learn to speak up for him or herself? So thank you, Mom. <laughs> First, I want to say thank you for the uh, man willing to give, uh, give his pla uh, place for me. I'm grateful. <laughs> and secondly. Oh, you grateful that Mama helped you out? <laughs> Uh, I helped myself. No, Mama did this. Mm -hmm. And now you taking credit for it. <laughs> I just to stand my appreciation, nothing more. Amazing. Anyway, would I... Would you I, have raised your hand again had Mama not said anything, or would you have left without raising your hand again? I would, uh, I would have left without raising my hand. Oh, see, that, that's how Mama been taking care of you. That was... <laughs> <laughs> All right, enough on Mama. Any, uh, anyway, okay. about what you say about... The poor, uh, poor having a right, uh, sounds like the majority of the poor in this city felt like they have the right to be poor. And it is, and that reminds me of an old saying Benjamin Franklin said, a man who is willing to give up a little freedom for a little security is worthy of neither freedom or security. These people are willing to give up, uh, give up their freedom for a, little, uh, for a few yeah. ounces of security. And I don't feel sorry for any of them. Nice. It's amazing to me how easy it is for human beings to give up their life for the wrong things. Not for the right thing, but for the wrong thing. Isn't that like interesting? What do you think about what we're talking about, what I've said? Anything you disagree with or don't understand? Or no, I, I agree, but I just feel like, um, because I know like when you were talking about the whole drag queen thing, I was just thinking how like you really are just, you can't see. Right. You're just like, yeah. oh, it's fine and going along and you really are in darkness. Yeah, because you in that fallen state, look like everything that's wrong is fine, it's fun, right. it feels like fun. I used to think, what kind of life would I have if I can't have fun? You know, why would I want to give up all this? This is fun. Being a Christian would be born. That's what I used to think. That's because Christianity is fake. The Christians are not true Christians in name say only. They got the knowledge of, but they don't have the spirit of. And so why would anybody want to be that? They have all these rules you can and cannot do. If you don't follow my rule, then you're not a Christian. You don't follow this. And they're not even keeping the rules. But there is true spirituality, Christianity, that is nothing but fun. It's so much fun. Mm -hmm. It really is. It's free fun. And so, uh, no, uh, one more. Thank you. Uh, and so, what do you think about when she said that in the present there's nothing? Have you had those moments? Yes, I have. Because sometimes I, like, you know, I'll just be doing whatever I'm doing and I'll think, oh, I'm in, right now, like I'm in the presence of God. And then I think, well, what am I supposed to be thinking now? Like, what is that supposed to be or mean? Interesting. If you're thinking that you're, you're in the, you say you think you are in you the know, present? You're just, 
and the thoughts and blah blah and then all of a sudden you're like oh it should be praying without ceasing you know so i'm so i have that moment and go okay i'm wiping the table or whatever but then i go okay now what like what is that you know what I mean? but did you say you'd be thinking that you're in the presence of god what do i do now oh, i'm sorry I, I missed what you said that's all like meaning like i'm with my mind's with my body that's what i mean oh, okay. so i'm thinking okay i'm 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 aware of what I'm doing, you know? And so then I think, well, is there something else I should be, like, <laughs> thinking about, you know? Yeah. Her, her statement was a little different than that because in the real present, there is no thinking. If you're thinking that you're in the presence of God, then you're not in the presence of God. When you keep your body where it is and you think, well, my body is where it is, I'm with God, you're not with God. In him, there is no thinking. And that Satan is telling you you're in the presence of God. The moment that she was talking, there was nothing. No thinking, no nothing. And then Satan, you know, she's like, you, you better be doing something here, right? But in his presence, there is no thinking. If you're thinking, you're in the presence of the devil. Oh, maybe that's why I'm asking, what am I supposed to be thinking, right? Because I'm not in the presence. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's n there are no thoughts. No thoughts. You want to get to the point where you literally have no thoughts. And you, it can't happen. It can't happen. It can't happen. It, and it will if you stay with it. Wisdom is amazing. His voice is a voiceless voice. So even when you're keeping your body, your mind with your body, and Satan just tell you, oh, look at you. You're keeping your mind with your body. No, you're not. You listen to the devil. Let that pass. You don't need to think, I'm keeping my mind with my body. Let it go, and you, you, it'll work. So you would just see it, or? Yes. OK. Like the lights are on now, you just see, right? right? As black as I am up here, you see me, right? Mm -hmm. I see you. Because yes. the light is shining, right? Mm -hmm. It'll be like that. OK. And the light is shining on the blackness of the thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> all thoughts, except for practical thoughts, all thoughts are black. Meaning, meaning that they are wicked and dark. Oh, Lord. Going, and the brothers speak up. Okay, that makes sense? Yeah, it's kind of com like, I mean, I, I just, I don't know if I should say I have to think on it, but no, it's kind of like, I don't know. I'll have to think on this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but stay with the silent prayer and watching. It will, I know what you mean, in a comic car. How do you? Not think at all. How do you how do you have your mind with your body and not think I have my mind right. with my body? When that when those thoughts come, I got my mind with my body. Let them go. That's the devil telling you that. He's in the way of that. And just notice that that's part of having a mind with the body. So you can see that the thoughts of Satan tell you that you do. Let that pass. That's not coming from you. When you're with the Father, there is no thinking. Zero thinking. I'm sorry? How I know. Can we get the mic? What the? How will you know? Yeah. You know. You just know. You know. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. You will know. Because I can't tell you how because the devil used that too. But you will know. When you're in the present, you will know. It will, it will, you'll know. It will be no question. Because when you walked in this room, the light was on, you didn't think, wow, I wonder if the lights are on, right? You didn't have to think. It's you just, knowing. Or you saw it, right? You could see it, you knew it, like that. That's a physical example. But it's clearer than that. Okay. All that right? Sense. Amazing, huh? Thank you. Um, yes. And then I want to get to the biblical question. Yes. You had your hair, right? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, do you mind if I switch gears back to what your comments you had about uh, public school real quick? Okay. Because um, we're on the topic of right. being in your mind and body. But uh, So what would your advice be for those at home and here for, for young children and I guess parents who can't afford the private school option or homeschool option as of now? Um, I have a relative who's going to be going to middle school soon. And I'm kind of preparing him, but I'm being very real about it, you know. But what would, how would you go about it if someone has to go to public school? You know, what, how would you guide them, you know, or? I would, and that's saying they're already in the school, or right now you kind of have to put them there. Right. I would have this mindset that I have to put them there. 
because that's what's holding you back. You already accept the defeat. And that's what Satan wants you to do, is to accept defeat. But just know I don't want to put them there, but don't get into I can't, I can't. How am I going to do it? I got, I got the money. That's what's holding you back. Get rid of all the darkness of the imagination. And don't be so defeated. And that's what the devil does. So if they're already there, how should they handle it as of now? Um, get a job, get them out. See how to get them out, homeschool, find other homeschoolers. There are ways, but you got to come out of the defeated motive, defeat motive. Like, I, I just ain't nothing I can do. There's a way out of everything, but you got to come out of the imagination about it. All right? Um, yes. Did you have a question? What are you thinking right now? Um. I'm trying. I'm doing my best not to think and just be here. Right. I'm, I'm practicing it. Yes, in this room, practice that too. Whatever the, the thoughts are telling you about the conversation, let that pass. Do not hold on to the conversation at all. And the, and the spirit of God will remind you. It'll be fine, and you will have the real the the wisdom of it. This is just a knowledge coming now. So don't hold on to the knowledge. Let it go in one ear and out the other. Because the devil will repeat the knowledge to you too. And then you'll go out repeating it to somebody else, feeling good, thinking you have it. Because they're like, oh, you're so smart. Where you get that from? And you're like, yeah. But it'll just be knowledge. You know what I mean? Yeah. Let the knowledge go. OK, the biblical question. Oh, OK. <laughs> Thanks, Ma. Are you looking out for hate, Mama? Oh, yeah, I'm going like this. <laughs> oh, Ma. Yes. Okay, I have some questions from the internet, people okay. watching online. Hey, good morning, y'all. Everything is fake asks, how does Jesse know it can happen? I mean, meaning know that you can get a place with no thoughts when you haven't experienced it yourself? When, when, when I haven't experienced it, or they right. haven't. Right, when I, you haven't. I wouldn't know about it if I didn't, wasn't experiencing it. That's the only way I can know about it. Because you've said something to the effect of, uh, I'm not there to where I have no thoughts ever. Something like but that. But I can see them now. There will come a time, because over the, I've been doing it for 32 years now, so over the time they get less and less and less because you start, you're growing in the light. And the light is shining brighter under darkness. And the more you get, the more you want. So you start trusting it even more so. And the light get brighter, and eventually they'll be gone. After a while, you're gonna, when I say watch those thoughts, keep your mind with your body, you're practicing that, right? After a while, you start catching the thoughts even before they can make you feel anything. But you have to do it. You got to do the work. You really got to do the work. A super chat from Osama bin Diesel along the same lines, I guess. <laughs> How do you remember? not to identify with the imagination. I can't seem to stay out of my head. Do the silent prayer and watch. And, and, and you can start saying to yourself, you know what, I see those thoughts, where did that come from? I was just told to drive off the freeway. <laughs> or I was just told the traffic is heavy. I need, look at that person on the cell phone in front of me holding up traffic. Let me go cuss them out. Where did that come from? I noticed that the post office most of the time, but not all the time, ladies, when they get in their car, first thing they do is get on the phone. And you see the, park, the traffic already in the parking, pull up into the little thing, and they're on their phone. And I'm thinking, where did that thought come from to pick up your phone and hold up traffic? Men do it too, but especially women. They, and they'll turn on their car and put on the brake light like they're about to back out. And they get on the phone. If you start questioning that, what made me get on my phone now? You start to see. It's okay to say to you, "Oh, that's weird. I would, I would never think to do that." I was asking a fat person the other day, "Why don't you start working out?" <laughs> and the fat person eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and sometimes they snack all day. So I said to the fat, and the fat person used to work out, right? And they stopped because of the Chinese virus. And I said, uh, Mr. Fat Person, why would you start back working out? <laughs> and so I saw the fat person the other day, and they were not eating breakfast. 
And I said to the fat person, oh, Mr. Fat Person, you didn't go to breakfast today? No. I'm like, why not? I thought I'd do something different. Good. That is the beginning. You got to start doing something different than what you've been doing. You got to stop blaming others for the way you feel. You got to stop trying to get something from somewhere else. They don't have it. You got to stop uh, not watching thoughts and, and dealing with it. You know, where did that thought, where did the thought of fear come from? You got to question it. How come I have a leader over me, a physical leader rather than God only? Question it, and then the answer will start coming. You got to take responsibility. Okay. That's it. Biblical question. Oh, oh, I want to tell y'all this. And I want to get to the biblical question. Here's, let's do the biblical question real fast, and then I want to share something with you. Uh, is it good to let the world betray you? That was the biblical question from last week. Is it good? The young man in the black want to respond. Sorry, can you say it again? Is it good to let the world betray you? Uh, from my personal experience, this is also my first time here. Oh, so, this is your first time here? Yeah, it is. Oh, man, all white people look alike. Thank you. <laughs> and you look just like another white brother. Oh, perfect. No. <laughs> What's your name and how did you find us? Uh, Jacob. Um, I moved here about five, six months ago. And I'm personally a practicing Catholic, but one of my friends told me that uh, it would be criminal for me not to come and watch your show, cause, or not like come here, because right. we've been watching your show uh, back at home for a while now. So. Yeah. So you live here now? I do, uh, over in San Gabriel. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. Um, and so the biblical question, any question about what you've heard and anything so far? No, so far I've been following, yeah. yeah. Have you forgiven your mother? I have. That was the big thing that got me to start watching your show was uh, forgive your mother, forgive your father. And how did, how did it go when you went to her? Oh, when I went to her, uh, it was a long conversation. It wasn't a super fun one, but uh, it was It productive. wasn't super fun? No. And, and what was not fun about it? My mom is a very difficult person. Uh, all mothers are. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone on this side of heaven. Sorry? All of them on this side of heaven are yeah. difficult. <laughs> <laughs> but and, um, for letting the world betray you, uh, I would say... Um, is it good to let the world betray you? Betray you, Yeah. I feel like that's uh, a good way to learn, like the nature of everything around you. So I'd say yes, like that's the best way to learn about how like brutal everything is and the way that you need to approach with caution and being careful around the world that you live in and uh, embracing God more. Uh, I would say you only really learn that truly when you are betrayed by like the material and the physical world, yeah. Have you ever protected yourself from being betrayed or got upset because you were be betrayed? Yeah. And why did you get upset at the time? Because I felt powerless. I felt like, you know, the varying things in my life that were happening, uh, like it all got upended and I felt powerless and hurt and wronged. And I was like, no, this is, and then, you know, after that experience, it, that's when I realized this is just how the world works. And, you know, I have to uh, not appreciate that, but work with it. And when I, when I say the word, I mean wife, family members, friends, coworkers, the president, the government, everybody. It's yeah. okay to let them portray you. Um, I would say more like it's okay for it to happen once so then you can know like how to approach that properly. Okay. Amazing. Um, anything else you want to say about that? No. <laughs> All right. Is it good to let the world portray you? Yes. Um, I say no. And why? Because in history... Nothing as good ever came of it. Of being betrayed? Yes. And what do you mean by that? Like, you say knowledge is evil. Right. So if someone... It's evil if you hold on to it and live from it. But if you let it go, it's not evil. But the ones that hold on to it are in the power of to manipulate. They're the ones that it's evil and they're betraying the people that let it go. Because the ones that hold on to the knowledge are evil? Yes. Yeah, they are. Anyone that holds on to knowledge is evil. But they're manipulating through science and like because proof of it's the evil. People. 
So is it good? So you I'm said no. It's not good. Oh, because they're manipulating you. Yes. Oh, the okay. People in power are manipulating you. So I mean, if you want to be the sheep or create more sheep, it's at peace with being interesting manipulated. I mean, it's fine. Have you ever been portrayed before? Yes. And how yes, did you yes. deal with it? Um, I changed my perception. It, it took me a while to um, go through finding God and returning to the one true God and um. Yeah, everything, everything you get to see, everything happened in front of you. It just unfolds. You be oh, okay, peace. interesting. Um, right here. Well, let me ask your husband first. The man come before the woman. No, I'm playing. Is it good to let the world betray you? Yes, it is. And why? Because it's a learning and experience. And when I say world, you mean, I mean close friends, family members, husband, wife, children, the cat, the dog. <laughs> Since the dog and cat are like people now, um, is it good to let anybody betray you? It's good. You have to learn from it. And and when, I have family members that betrayed me before, you know. So from that, yeah, I got angry about it. And, you and know, why did you get angry? Because that was my secondary emotion, and that's what I did. I just, just lashed out, you know. But then I started learning that, hey, I need to just calm it down a little bit and, you know, just be uh, at peace with myself. So that's why I started doing it. Oh, okay. Um, the young lady behind you. Have you ever been, you're so young, have you ever been betrayed before? Yes. And what did it feel like? Same thing by family members. It felt, I mean, by friends of, as well. It felt like hurtful. But then I realized that I was too into my emotions because I don't, through friendships, and family members, if you really love somebody truly, you don't need them to love you back. So mm -hmm. I realized that maybe I didn't love them like how I should have been. So Interesting. Amazing. One more, the young lady in front of you. Have you ever been betrayed? I have. Mm -hmm. Have you ever betrayed anyone? Yes. And so what did it feel like to be betrayed? Uh, to me, it just taught me to be not so attached to whatever it was and to be closer to God. And, and just, how did it feel just like? Just let it go over on my shoulders and not even think about it. And how, how did it feel to betray someone? I would say initially I hurt for them that I did that to them, and then I had to let that go too. So you so. betrayed them, and then you feel hurt for them? Yeah, because I did it to them. You feel good about it, and then you feel bad? Right. Oh, yeah. I see. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> Is it good to let the world betray you? Uh, yeah, of course. So it would be good for your wife to betray you? Yes, absolutely. And why? Because it'll teach me about how I react to it. Oh. I, if I'm watching myself, then it'll teach me more about what I need to grow in. Oh, okay. Interesting. Mm -hmm. You know, I asked my experts about it, and hate said something that was interesting. He said that Christ were betrayed. Did you say something like that? You said, did you say yes? Uh, hold on for the mic. Did you say yes, it was good to be betrayed or no? Or you said try, it's happened to Christ? I know you said I, that part. I don't remember, but I think it, I thought of it as, I don't remember my answer, but I did. did you did say Christ was betrayed. Yeah. You remember saying that? Vaguely. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not trying and, to be But he was obstacle. betrayed, right? Say again? Was yeah. Quite, and, and what was the purpose of that? Or the purpose of that? Well, the, the Bible said the ultimate <laughs> purpose was so that he could go through what he was supposed to go through for us to be saved, quote unquote. And it seemed like he was fine with it because he was about his purpose and not about not being betrayed. Oh, OK. Does that make sense? I know, yeah, that's true about him. And so are you saying it's good to betray, let the world betray you or not? Yeah, I think it's good to let the world betray you. And why? Because the world is... When I say world, I'm talking about human beings, right, family members. I'm, I'm not talking about just the big old government or the media, because what the government and media are doing is happening one-on-one -on -one to everybody, too. It's not just happening with the government. The government is just especially what we all are, to be honest with you. Yes, go ahead. I'm not saying you should be overly trusting, obviously, but you can't control people. Okay. And you shouldn't try, I don't think. Amazing. 
Yes, you want the last word. Have you ever been betrayed? Yes. And how did you deal with it? Um, I, it was. I can see you going off if you betrayed. <laughs> <laughs> Can't you see her just, what the? I did go off. See? <laughs> I did go off. And then. And why did it, you go off? Well, because I was betrayed by the pastor and his family, and I'm like, what the? Like, I'm supposed to be looking up to you, and... What so made you think you should look up to a pastor? Well, I mean, you know, I grew up thinking that oh. they were God. Right. So, yeah, it was, it was, I did go off. And so, have you ever betrayed anyone? Have I ever betrayed anyone? Have you ever betrayed anyone? Yeah. And what did that feel like, to betray someone? It felt good. It felt good? Oh, yeah. It w <laughs> <laughs> so if it felt good, why did you get mad when you were betrayed? Well, I, I, I thought I was doing it right back to them. Well, I mean, I did it right back to them. Oh, you did? Yeah. <laughs> Is it good to let the world betray you? I feel like you have no control over that. Like you just, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen. But your reaction to that is on one now. Because after I betrayed them, it didn't, I mean, it felt good at the moment. But after I'm like, damn, it just, it made me feel like a really bad person. She like, said, damn in church. I did. I am so sorry. <laughs> I've just been betrayed. <laughs> no, I'm playing. I'm playing. <laughs> She's a millennial. I am. Yeah. And so, if your husband, not that he would ever do it, but if he, and I hate doing this, but let's say he betrayed you, would you be like, wow, that's a good thing? I wouldn't say it's a good thing. It just, it would, that's just something he would do. I, I'm not going to sit there. You get upset about it or anything? No, not at this point where I'm at now, no. I oh, just, okay. Okay. But if you didn't know what you know now, you go off. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He'd be off the balcony or something. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay. Uh, did you have your hair, sir? Okay, real fast. Um, yes. Is it good for the world to betray you? Yes. And why? Because the greatest thing ever came from betrayal, which was Jesus dying for the sins. But um, also, it allows you to see that whoever betrayed you was too important. And it was actually a glass ceiling keeping you from the real thing, which is God, obviously. But it shows you that it's too important to you. Every, everything that Christ went through, in order for us to die, we got to go through it too. Because you see how your ego is attached to the world, people, places, and things. And so if you are betrayed, be glad to see that. I don't care who is doing it. Be glad because you'll see how you're reacting to it. If you feel anything about it, you get angry or you get happy or you get wish, I want to get back at them and all that, then there is something wrong with you. And you wouldn't know that it's the devil in that person. It's not that person. And that person cannot help themselves. And because of the devil in you and your little ego, you're judging them too. You're no better than a betrayer. And Christ went through that so that we, as James said, we will be able to do it. Christ overcame the world. And so can we. Because Christ was of the spirit of his father. Christ the man had allowed the spirit, well not allowed, but the spirit of God would put in him. And he's in us too, but we got to overcome the world. So from now on, from this day forward, whatever happened to you, let it happen. Meaning don't get mad about it. Don't worry about what others think about it. Do not protect the ego. And then that doesn't mean you're going to go out and hang out with the people who betrayed you because you would see the devil in, you, in them and you wouldn't want to hang out with them anyway, but you also see the devil in you because you got a feeling from it. Either a good feeling or a bad feeling. Both are egos. And that happens so you can overcome the world. You only want to have faith. You only want to have love in God. And, and, if you, and, and the only reason you're going to feel betrayed is because you're trying to get something from that person. Like she was saying about the preacher, she felt betrayed by the preacher his family or something, right? If she had not put the preacher on a pedestal and wasn't trying to get anything from the preacher, no matter who, she would have understood the preacher just a human being too, working on what I got to work on. And it wouldn't have been nothing. She would love to pray for the preacher.
instead of judging the preacher because she wasn't, it's the message. Christ said in a movie I was watching last night, they, the disciples tried to get something from them or try to put him on a pedestal. He's like, I'm just a human being. I'm just a human being. Simon, whoever you were talking to, Thomas, one of those guys. And it's the Father, his spirit is in me. It's not me. I'm just a human being. And greater work shall y'all do too. Because the spirit of the Father in you. You are a human being. The pastor is a human being. The pastor wife is a human being. And so when you go, even Christ was a human being with the spirit of the Father in him. And he brought a message of freedom, of salvation, how to get it. But if you put Christ on the pedestal and call him God and all that, how are you going to get the message? Because as soon as Christ, and he made a lot of jokes, and as soon as he makes a joke, you're going to get mad at you. How are you going to make a joke? My daddy did, and he made a joke. Because you put the pastor on a pedestal. You put the preacher, uh, the preacher or, or Jesus on a pedestal. And in your idea, this, this Jesus better not make one mistake. Because he made a joke in this movie, and the guy didn't laugh. He's like, oh, I guess my joke was too soon. Or something like that. Because in, in the spirit, there's nothing that's serious at all. So from this year, starting now, if somebody hurts your feelings or makes you mad or makes you feel good or gossiping about you or whatever, let it happen. Don't protect it. Don't hide. Don't run. Just keep living your life. That needs to happen so you can overcome the world. All right? This young lady wanted the last word on that. What do th you think about that? Because some people get mad at somebody. They gossip about me. I ain't going around that no more. You hide in the ego. Go face it so you can overcome the world. And your faith will be in God. Yes. Well, I remember a time when I was betrayed. And as it was happening, I felt like I was outside of my body looking at it. And yeah. I didn't really have any feelings either way. Years later, the person reached out and wanted to extend the olive branch. And I welcomed this person back into my life with open arms, but the friendship could not move right. forward because she was so uncomfortable. She wanted me, and so did others, wanted me to be angry Absolutely. and wanted me to be a certain way, and she just couldn't handle the love, I think. That's why they do it. The devil wants to control you. The devil will not be comfortable around you if he can't control you, meaning the devil inside of you and the devil outside of you inside of others. You know, amazing. Last quick word, Frankie. So one of the apostles in the Bible talked about it. Uh, he said, uh, "Count it joy when you have tribulation and yeah. and works, and to actually be happy when that is happening because it, it's uh, it, it's trying your spirit and be, and you're becoming more Christ-like uh, when you don't judge." I don't remember Absolutely. the apostle, but he he said. Uh, you know, it's a good so thing. here's what I want to encourage you because we're going to be tough this year, right? We ain't going to play baby, baby no more. So the next time something happens and it affects you emotionally in any form or fashion, let it happen. And keep your eyes on you. Don't blame them. And you will overcome the world. And you'll be able to live in this world and not be affected by it at all. And, and the devil is going to tell you, what about your reputation? What about your this or that? That's the devil talking to you. You ain't got no reputation. You, you don't have any business thinking of yourself as anything anyway. It's just a word with no meaning. Um, did I see your hand somewhere? Oh, okay. What's on your mind? You looking crazy. What? Oh, that's a real, real person. What, what's wrong? Oh, I was just thinking about what you were saying. Uh, and what about it? Uh, like keeping your eyes on yourself and letting go. So and what do you think about that? It's hard. It's hard? Mm -hmm. And only hard because, oh, like, like the fat person was saying they did something different, mm -hmm. but they're going to start working out. You know, you're right. So do something different. So it is hard because you've been doing it the wrong way. But I think in the moment, like when you're actually in the moment, I think it's really hard. It's only hard because you have not, it's like lifting weights. In the very moment, the weight is heavy and hard, right? Mm -hmm. But once you do it, it gets easy. So if you start doing it the other way, mm -hmm. then eventually the weight gets lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter. 
I'm going to practice this week. Yeah, so next time your husband makes you mad, don't, don't, don't go, why you made me mad? You put pressure on me. You feel it. <laughs> and, be, and be grateful. Okay. And don't complain about it. Don't even say anything about it. Okay. Stop protecting the devil. Okay. Let's do it the other way now. Instead of complaining about it, trying to get rid of the problem real fast, trying to feel good and all that, that ain't going to never work. It's only making you worse. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so stop rolling your eyes. Okay. She's sitting there look like this. <laughs> Can I get out of here? I, I've seen that before. So. <laughs> nice. Yes, last word. So like say, like you realize, oh, like I'm getting emotion about, emotional about this, yes. right? Do you point it out? Can you point it out, or should no. you just let it slide? Take it, let it slide. Okay. Don't point out, oh, you're making me emotion. Or, oh, honey, I feel emotion. No. Let the light defeat the darkness. That's a good question. No, don't, don't even point it out that he's hurting you emotionally. Don't even point out, well, you're putting too much stress on me. Because if you were, one, if you were whole, no such thing as too much stress being put on you. It's only that way because you divide it. Yeah, yeah. I, I ask that because, like, for example, my, my um, husband's parents, my in-laws, they, like, he kind of picks on her, right? Like, picks on well, who? Uh, my mother-in-law. Oh, so your father-in-law picks on your mother-in-law. Right, right. Okay. Like, you know, oh, you didn't cook enough, or oh, you cooked too much, or whatever. So I realize, like, my husband kind of does that to me. But he will say... Oh, why does, like, oh, you know, oh, my mom's irritated because whatever, whatever. And then, but I don't think he realized that sometimes he does it to me. And I realize, like, it's, I do realize, like, oh, wow, look, I'm feeling a, about this, right? And I go, okay, I need to get over that. But then I did point it out because, well, you're doing the same thing that your dad does. Well, that's okay to say that. Okay. That's but what I thought I mean. you were trying to point it out so you can feel better about the stress yeah. stuff he's putting on you. Yeah, okay. You want to feel the stress so you can overcome it. And you're going to see it's not you. But if he's like doing exactly what his father is doing, right. you're just like your daddy, man. Yeah. See that? Mm -hmm. You're just like your daddy, honey. <laughs> yeah. Right? Okay, good. <clears throat> good. So I was going to ask you about, so I want you all to think about this this week. You got to do your work. Uh, in the Word, it says, God said to present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. Anybody ever heard that? Anybody doing that already? Who's doing it? Let me see your hands. Oh, Lord. You doing it? How? It, this is not the Bible question for the week. This is just assignment for this week. Present your body a living sacrifice. And you say you're trying how? Uh, eating healthy. Celibacy, um, and uh, I'm not reckless in the sense of like I'm not going to put myself in danger if I'm like I'm not going to be stupid and okay. like you know go jump off something for some reason I don't know. All right, you said you're presenting your body a living sacrifice. Did I see your hand? Yes. By doing what? I take care of myself. I eat healthy. I exercise regularly. I drink water. I don't really drink alcohol. Okay. And you say you're doing it too? By doing what? Um, I am doing it mostly by like um, practicing a silent prayer, no sex out of wedlock. Obviously, I work out. I, I, I fast a few times a week, which for people with silent prayer, I find fasting is very interesting to do with it. Um, and so you, and, and that's what you're doing to present your I body? I fast, I work out, I don't have sex out of wedlock, I pray. I, you know, I pray without ceasing. I do my silent prayer every morning, every night. Okay. Are you doing So this week, present your bodies a living sacrifice. Uh, you, know, you know what that means? Because you're a little Bible thumper, Christian. Uh, you overcome a Bible thumper? I wouldn't consider myself one. My name before. is Alice, and I used to be a Bible thumper. I no. mean, I was raised in church, but I would never have considered right. myself a Bible thumper. What does it mean to present your body a living sacrifice? I think doing the things that are kind of like asked of you, like, like they were saying, like taking care of your body and kind of 
kind of holding yourself accountable to the things that kind of God sets. Oh, okay. Yes. Now I'm going to change my answer. I know what you're, uh, now, now I know what you're asking. Uh, well, then, okay, go ahead. Yeah, I know what no, you're I'm asking. T- I'm just saying that. This week, we want to present our bodies a living sacrifice, and next Sunday, we'll talk about what happened. It's like when I said, keep the mind where the body is. It's somewhat, you know, I'm telling you to present the body. It's in the Word, present the body a living sacrifice. Can I, can I comment on something just real quick? Yes. I was going to say, the same look you had when everyone started raising their hands when, yo, you're a creator, it was the same look you had <laughs> when you said the bodies, and I was like, ah, see, I'm onto something. He doesn't mean eating healthy at all anymore. <laughs> You know, I'm thinking you're, you're more referring to, like, how Jesus gave up his body. And as far as it, like, you're not necessarily sacrificial like the movie Apocalypto, per se, but in the way you're not putting your body on a pedestal. It's like whatever comes at you is just going to come at you. But that's how I sort of you know, oh, okay. change my answer. Now. Well, your assignment this week, it's just an assignment, right? Present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. Uh-huh. So the biblical question for this week Every human being is an idol worshiper. Every human being. There's not one. (laughs) It's an idol worshiper. What does that mean? No, not that. Not what does that mean? Why? Every human being on this side of heaven is an idol worshiper. Why? Why? Did you know you're an idol worshiper? And you got it bad, man. No, I don't have it bad at all. I think a lot of people do have it bad. Did you know you're an idol worshiper? I don't believe I'm an idol worshiper. You're not an idol worshiper? That's overgeneralizing a whole lot of people. Oh, okay. Everybody's an idol worshiper. Overgeneralizing. Unless our name is the idol and we all use first and last names, that's the only way it could be idol worshippers. Oh, amazing. I don't think so. Did you know you were idol worshiper? Yes. Right here. You yeah. knew you were idol worshiper? Yeah, we all look up to somebody. And, you know, and we're all, you know, we're all guilty of it because we want to be like that person. Okay. So are you going to present your body a living sacrifice? Say again? Are you going to practice presenting your body yes. a living sacrifice? Okay. Yes. Amazing. Hey, are you, did you, I asked Hate this morning, I asked Doug, this morning, did he know he was an idol? I'm like, Doug, do you know you're an idol worshiper? He ran out of the room. I'm like, don't run, Doug. I already asked these guys. They are. And then he came back. Uh, did you know you were an idol worshiper? Yeah. Uh, what would you say this morning when I asked you about it? Well, I started to make a joke about what some of the pastors, like the trendy sort the of pastor. pastors say, that... We are made to worship, so we're always worshiping something, and usually it's not God. Oh, and that's why we are wi- idol worshiper. Right, because if we're not going to worship God, we're going to worship something else. Amazing. Am I going to be an idol worship? <laughs> Who said deep? Oh, interesting. Did you know you were an idol worshiper? How? Because I always want to follow and look up to something. And so that thing hasn't always been the right thing. Okay. That's the biblical question. A good one. A doozy. He said, that's not good. Every human being on this side of heaven is an idol worshiper. I do want to tell you that it doesn't have to be that way. Just to make it a little easy for you. But everybody is. Anyway, we're way over time. Thank you all. Remember the biblical question and, um, and the uh, work for this week. Present your body to live in sacrifice. All right. Uh, thank you for your donation, your support. We appreciate it. And uh, do the silent prayer. Become your own man, your own woman. And you'll see. You will see, but you got to stay with it. Stay with it. And thank you all for coming. I appreciate it. It was amazing. Amazing. Nice.